Okay, these are the parts out of the extension housing. It drives the rear drive line bearing. There's a little needle bearing inside here. This plastic thing goes over that part. This is the oil pump. And then this is the extension housing cleaned out. And there's a sleeve down there, or a bushing, I guess, down at the other end. Right here. I don't know what it's made out of. clip in there it holds that bearing in. So I'm set up here for removing the bearing from the uh, this is the rear extension housing output shaft to the uh, rear drive line for the four wheel drive and I'm going to replace that bearing and put the bearing separator on flat side up Hopefully it'll come off of there fairly easy. Bearing is free. Extension housing. Just try to put one together here. Well, that goes inside. So uh, probably be a good idea to lubricate some of this stuff. Shove it all in there. This thing has little tabs sticking out. So you got to get them lined up. And you put it in there. It's a lot worse. It's got some grooves on it. Some oil on it. It's flush. Try it that way. <laughs> It'll work a little better. That's Thomas Darcy with credit. Coming up. Okay, the bottom of the bolt head. About point seven eight. Twelve millimeter. These bolts were pretty tight when I took them off, so I'm gonna put some oomph into them to tighten them up. Not sure why they were so tight. Seal pr feels pretty good. to check to see if the seal's any good. Push the shaft in there. See how well it grips it. 
Doesn't seem too bad. Seal on this one's bad. All the oil was in here. I know it's bad, so I'm gonna pop it out to see what it looks like. Careful when you pop it, you don't scrape the aluminum as you're prying it out. Push back in there too far, you scratch that, and you'll have to put some gasket sealer on it. Seal's uh, fairly thick. This is the replacement seal. You can see it's quite a bit thinner. You slide that over. And it grips it. Probably about the same as that one. So I think I'm going to replace that seal. Oh, I gotta put a new seal in it. Nice snug fit. Normal for that to flop around a little bit. After you stick this in there, tightens everything up. This is the rear drive line. Of course, you're gonna need to put a seal in here. Before I put these in, I like to pack the back sides. A little grease in there, keep that spring from popping out. And wrap some grease around there. The bearing that I pulled out of there. This is a Timken 1015N. That was the bearing or the uh, seal that goes right here for the ship shifter. This seal here is a Beck Arnley 0523899. Oops. Try to get it to go down there evenly. Kind of got a little head of itself there on the one side. Flat side of a socket. It's a real nice clean looking one. One of the nicest, cleanest ones I've seen. That's a uh, one and a sixteenth. One and a sixteenth. Sure has a washer on it. That thing is ready, nice and clean. All right, I just slid this on. Put a new gasket on it with a gasket compound. Greased up the seal inside a little bit. 
for this shift shaft to slide over. And now you put all these bolts in, they're like inch and five sixteenths long. <clears throat> okay, we're ready to drop this interlock pin down that hole. Then you drop a .312 ball bearing right down on top of it. And you take this sheet metal covered spring, put it right there. I'm just going to put this cover on it with a gasket. There's a tab right here. If you tighten that screw down, bend that tab up. These three bolts have about three quarter inch of thread. This one's got about an inch and a quarter of thread. And then this is the uh, wire clamp. And down through this hole, you want to line up the shaft and the fork. And put the roll pin in there. I like to use an oversized punch to make sure I don't drive it too far in. You can tell by the sound that it bottomed out. And this gets uh, one of the large plugs, six millimeter, which I also like to goop up just a little bit with some gasket con non-hardening gasket compound. Call it good.